Oh. Hello, you two. Sentinel H back for episode two of my Rotary Craft tutorial. Uh, we got a lot to go through this time. Um, I'm going to be showing you the work table. Uh, we're going to get basic power, and I'm going to show you how to get up to steam power, as well as the intermediate crafting components that you're going to need to make to make pretty much everything. So, last episode, um, we got our first uh, ingots of steel, of HSLA steel, and you'll want to use those first ingots to make the work table. Um, so this is the work table right here, and you need the work table to make everything uh, in Rotary Craft. So all the machines have to be crafted on the work table, um, so it's pretty simple. A piece of redstone, two stone slabs, two HSLA steel ingots, a brick block, and a crafting table gets you the work table. And that's what these are here. So um, this is the work table, and it's just a crafting table really, but it, you need to use it to make um, machines. So the first thing we're going to talk about how to make is the easiest, simplest, let's get rid of that, power uh, motor in Rotary Craft, which is the DC electric engine. Um, it's super, super cheap, super easy, but it doesn't produce very much power at all. So that's how you craft it um, in the work table. This is the work table interface. You just put your ingredients here and then it comes out over here. And you notice that you're going to need uh, these things called base panels and uh, shaft units. And these are incredibly common crafting components for pretty much every machine. And if we come over here, I'll show you how to make these. So these are actually made in standard crafting benches. Um, so you, sh you can and probably should automate production of these at some point because you're going to need a lot of them. Uh, base panels are crafted with just three steel ingots along the bottom and you do get three of them. And shaft units are crafted with three ingots uh, diagonally like this and you do get three shaft units. So you get one unit for uh, each ingot so it's not that bad. Um, okay, and these are the only two that you need to craft the DC electric engine. Two redstone two base panels, a shaft unit, and four HSLA steel ingots get you the DC electric engine. And that's this little guy right here. I'll just pop him down, doesn't matter where. He looks like this. Now, when you place him down, you'll notice a red box in front of him. Um, that's where the power goes. You'll notice it on him because you just you can see the shaft. So whatever you want to get the power has to go in this space and, and be oriented uh, the proper way. And all you have to do to get this guy to work is put a lever by him. He makes a little noise and he'll produce constant power. but he, Not very much. Very, very little. So we'll get rid of him because that noise is a bit annoying. If we go in and we um, open our handbook and we go into here and we click on him, the electric engine, you'll notice that it produces um, four newton meters of torque at 256 uh, radians per second. If you multiply these n two numbers together, that's your power output of 1,024 kilowatts. Well, that's 1.24 kilowatts. So very, very little power, um, but it is enough to run the uh, most basic machine uh, in Rotary Craft, and that's really the pump. Um, the simplest sort of thing that, you, that you're going to want to make. Um, so we've got our DC electric engine now. Uh, we want to get our pump because you need that uh, to get steam power. Um, well, I mean, you don't really need that to get steam power because you could use a pump from another mod, but if you want to be a Rotary Craft purist like I tend to be when I build with Rotary Craft, um, you're going to want the pump. Uh, so to get that, we need liquid pipes, and that's made in the work table like this. Six HSLA steel ingots and three blocks of glass get you 16 liquid pipes, so it's really not that bad. Um, you do get quite a lot of these. And once you have your liquid pipes, we can... Oh, I didn't fill in the pump recipe. I'm bad. Yeah, it's a... Uh, so y you can see it's like this. Uh, two HSLA steel ingots, a glass pane, a ba two base panels, three liquid pipes, and an impeller. Now the impeller is over here. And to make the impeller, you need an HSLA steel gear, which is right here. So all the gear is is five HSLA steel ingots, like so, and you get three gears. So you don't get five, it's not one per each. And then uh, you craft one HSLA steel gear with adding four extra ingots, and that gives you the uh, impeller. So you'll use the impeller to make the pump, and that's this guy right here. So if we then place our pump, let's see, where I'm gonna I'll go like that and place him here.
place the pump over top of the water and we um, place our DC engine and then the liquid will come out uh, oops I'm messing up all over the place the liquid will come out the side so you place your liquid pipes and they automatically connect and if I put a lever here and turn this on now we can see that the water is being pumped out. Now, the pump has an internal tank of 24,000 millibuckets, which is pretty nice. Um, it's got that internal tank, and it will fill up that internal tank while, as it goes. These uh, pipes have a capacity in them. Uh, I'm not sure how much, really. But this will eventually fill up. Um, the DC engine is enough to power the pump uh, at a rather slow rate. You could always add another one uh, if you wanted the pump to go a bit faster but this is actually completely sufficient um, for what we're going to do today which is, is a steam engine. So that's how that works. I hope everyone's still with me. Yeah and these these do get a bit noisy these machines. Um, ugh. So if you want you can go ahead and grab a sound muffler from Extra Utilities. I like the sound effects but you might not. It's just a note block and blue and some wool. But, uh, you know, if the sound effects are getting on your nerves, pop a uh, sound muffler down. You don't have to listen to it. See? So I can turn that back on and you don't hear it. But now the pump's running. So, the DC electric engine is great for running pumps. Um, it's, you know, anything that you want to run constantly with no uh, hassle because it'll run forever. But it's terrible for running anything. Um, you'd have to chain a crap ton of these together to get any amount of power. And you, it would be much cheaper just to build a steam engine. So the steam engine is really, it's uh, your tier two, I consider it tier two power generation. Uh, it produces more power than the electric engine, but still not quite enough for a lot of things. And it's crafted like this. It's crafted with two base panels, a copper ingot, a shaft unit, three cobblestone, an impeller, and a condenser. And, okay. The sound muffler doesn't appear to be working anymore. That's weird. So it's a bit glitchy. Um, so you may want to turn your sound down a bit. These, these machines do, do make a lot of sound, uh, but I like it that way. So the condenser is over here. Again, crafted in a uh, regular crafting table. And, oh, come on. These aren't sound mufflers. don't seem to be working properly. And condensers are crafted with five HSLA steel ingots and four liquid pipes like so. It gives you one condenser, so it's a bit expensive on steel. Everything takes a lot of steel, like I said. And uh, you do that, that'll give you the steam engine. Now, the steam engine takes a little bit of, 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 of a setup, um, but not really very much, and you get in power forever. It's infinite as long as you keep your pump going, which, because of the DC electric engine, you can keep your pump going indefinitely. So if I, if I pop down a steam engine, there are, uh, it looks like this. You see it's got the output here, and it's also got this little uh, hole on the back, and that's where you feed your water. Um, you got to keep water in this, and then you got to heat it up. And like other, uh, like the blast furnace, the steam engine doesn't have an internal inventory. You don't put coal in this. You have to heat it up from the bottom. You have to use an ambient uh, temperature. You'll notice that its temperature is 25 degrees C here in the grass. If I place it over here in the desert, it's 40. Go away. Don't want you sand. Um, so how do we get this working? Well, there's two ways to heat this up uh, right off the bat. Um, the one I prefer, and then um, the other one. Well, this, you know, it, they're both they work they both work well. One of them requires a bit of extra resource resource resources. The easiest way to heat up your steam engine is to place a piece of nether rack and light it on fire, and put your steam engine on top of it. You'll notice that the temperature will rise. Now, the steam engine, if I go into its inventory, this bucket slot is for putting water in. Um, this is heating up now, and if we click on the info tab, it produces 32 newton meters of torque at 512 radians per second for 16 kilowatts. So this is 16 times more powerful than the uh, little DC engine. So you'd have to build 16 of those little DC ones to get the same power output as the steam engine, and that would actually end up costing you a lot more resources. So if we go to the next page, we'll see it requires water and heat, and you risk overheating at 150 degrees, 150 C. So that's the real issue with this. Um, 
That's why I like fire over top of Neverak because that will heat it up to, I believe, 130, and then it'll stop. So you never have to worry about it overheating if you use the Netherrack with fire. Unless you're in maybe a desert biome or the, the Nether. I haven't actually tried running it there, but you couldn't run this in the Nether anyway because you wouldn't have water. Well, I guess you could get water if you pumped, if you piped it and stuff. But anyway, if I take these liquid pipes, and you don't need to use these liquid pipes. You can actually use any liquid pipe. from uh, You could use thermal expansion, liquiducts, um, or whatever. But it'll fill up with water. And uh, it's it's draining the system because it's got quite a lot. It's got a quite a large um, water tank inside of it. We turn this back on. Hopefully, this time muffler will do its job this time. And we see that it's filling up with fuel. And this will run forever uh, once it heats up. So it's up to 97, 98, 99. Once it hits 100, it'll start running. And there we go. We've got our steam engine. Ugh, oh, that that doesn't that seems to be a bit glitchy. Um, but now the steam engine's running and it's producing power. And that's here we see it. that's a decent amount of energy that you can use to oh come on power quite a lot of things now the other way to heat this these up is to use lava the same method we use to heat the blast furnace but it's not quite as good uh, when using uh, on the steam engine because if you remember earlier lava block will heat it up to 600 degrees and and that will just melt the thing um, and so you don't want to do that so if I place the steam engine here Oh, I've got that lava block one one block too low, I think. Yeah, it's one block too low. So let me just go and do that. And I'll place our steam engine, and it'll start heating up. Uh, but, but we don't want to just leave it, because it'll overheat. So what we need to do, if you want to do it this way, is to make what you call cooling fins, which is simply three base panels and six shaft units. And what cooling fins do is they will cool whatever is underneath them. If I go to place the cooling fins, You'll notice that the this blue block underneath them, and it's going to cool down whatever's in there. So what the cooling fins are going to do is keep this cool. Um, it'll it'll heat up slower if you oops, you only want one. It'll heat up slower if you uh, place it on there while it's still heating. So you may want to wait until it's up to 100. But um, so I'll knock it off there. But once it's up to 100, place the cooling fins, and the cooling fins will keep it at uh, uh, 100 and. 30 something so it'll be close as you can see here 120 is what the fire caps out at 120 so it'll stay like that forever um, once this heats up to 100 I'll pop cooling fins on it and you'll see that it'll get hotter than that but it won't it won't overheat so place that there that'll keep going up but it's not gonna overheat if I pop these pipes over here to get some water Oop. I don't know why that happened this one's running as well now and it's going to cap out at 120. The cooling fins are going to keep it at uh, 120. Did these heat up? No. These are keeping cool. So yeah, that's how you get to steam power. Um, steam power is great. I use a lot of them. Um, now obviously you can't use these for everything because you, you need a ton of them. But they're a really great um, intermediate power source. And... Um, you can use them for a couple of things. Next episode, I'm going to, because this one's dragging on a bit, I'm going to show you what you can use these for. Um, we're going to get some uh, furnace action going on with Rotorcraft, and then we'll also, also show you how to um, gear up to the next uh, tier of power generation, which is the uh, gas um, engine. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was rather clear, even though we covered a lot of stuff. Um, I'll see you next episode. I'm Sinal H, and I'm signing out.